Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to our informa information session today on the South Row Electric Vehicle Charging Program. And thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Logan Hoyland, and I am the project coordinator for the Energy Efficiency Program and specifically the South Grow Electric Vehicle Charging Program here at the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. I am also joined by my colleague Kelvin, who will be managing and moderating uh, the chat for today's webinar. Uh, just a few housekeeping things uh, to go over before we begin the webinar. Uh, this presentation is being streamed as a Teams live event, so all microphones and cameras are turned off and muted. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded, and the recording will be available on our YouTube page as well as on the South Grow website uh, in a few days. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, we ask that you please submit them in the Q&A box on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we will try to get to as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. Uh, there is an upvote feature, so if you do see any questions uh, that are similar to the ones that you may be looking at asking, uh, just upvote them and we will try to get to the most upvoted questions as quickly as we can at, at the end of this presentation. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge that this presentation is being presented from Treaty 6 territory. We would like to acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant communities. A little bit about the Action Centre. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Action Centre, we were established in 2009 as a collaborative initiative between Alberta municipalities, the rural municipalities of Alberta and the government of Alberta. The Action Centre provides funding, technical assistance and education to Alberta municipalities, nonprofits, and schools in addressing climate change. Since 2009, we have managed a variety of programs that have made a significant impact throughout Alberta, including work with 389 unique organizations to complete 777 projects and catalyze $79 million in clean energy investments. Uh, some of our other impacts can be seen there on the screen as well. So just looking at our agenda and what we're going to be going over today. Uh, first, we will start with EV charging 101. Uh, we'll go over the three different levels of charging, uh, the different plug types, and learn a little bit about charging itself so we all understand the same language and terminology. Uh, after that, we will look at the specific program objectives of the South Grove Charging Program, as well as the South Grove Partnership with the Action Center. Following that, we will look at the funding for this program, uh, how that works and the different, different levels of funding, as well as the eligibility and the requirements to participate in the program. Uh, following that, we will look at a participation timeline, so going through an expression of interest, an application, and a funding agreement. Uh, we will also look at some tools and resources uh, that can be useful when looking to learn more about electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging programs. And finally, we will end today's webinar uh, with a Q&A, trying to go through as many different questions as we can. Uh, so to get started, we will look at EV charging 101, uh, specifically the different charging levels. Uh, currently, there are three different charging levels uh, that electric vehicles can use, uh, level one, level two, and level three. Level one is the slowest charge option. Uh, it requires 120 volts, so typical of a three-pronged wall outlet. Uh, it adds around five to eight kilometers of range per hour, so quite slow. Uh, they are portable. They do come with a purchase of an electric vehicle. They can be stored uh, in the trunk, uh, behind the seat, in the box of the truck, uh, wherever, wherever you like, and they're typically only used for emergency use. Uh, because they are so slow, uh, they're not normally practical for overnight charging or through the day charging because they're just so slow. And for this reason, they are not eligible for the electric vehicle charging program. Uh, the second level of charging is level two, uh, which is the medium charge option. Uh, level two requires 240 volts to operate. So typical of a wall outlet for a dryer or an oven. Uh, this level adds around 25 to 45 kilometers per hour of range dependent on the specific vehicle uh, and the charger itself. Level two is best used for top-ups uh, when parked 
overnight uh, when parked in a single location for over an hour. Uh, level two chargers are often used in residential settings, uh, for example, in garages, when people come home in the evenings, can plug their vehicle in, uh, charge it overnight, and it's ready to go in the morning, as well as during the day at work, uh, they can be plugged in and you can recoup some of that lost uh, range. And they're best used for whenever you're parked for over, over an hour in the same location. Uh, level two chargers are eligible to receive funding uh, through the charging program. And finally, level three or level three DC fast charging is the fastest charge option available for electric vehicles. However, it does require phase three power because the charger requires a high voltage and high current. Uh, phase three power, which is, need is needed, which can often lead to uh, infrastructure upgrades being required uh, to accommodate that higher voltage and current. Uh, a level three charger can charge an electric vehicle from around zero to 80% in roughly 30 minutes, uh, depending on the specific vehicle itself and the charger as well. Level three chargers are best used for long distance traveled. Uh, when you're going a long distance, uh, you've lost most of your range, you can stop, uh, charge for around 30 minutes and recoup around 80% of that lost, uh, lost battery range. And they are eligible uh, for funding through the self throw electric vehicle charging program. Uh, next, we will look at the different plug types uh, that are used by electric vehicles and electric vehicle chargers. Currently, there are four main plug types that are used by vehicles. Uh, the first is the most common, which is the J1772 connector, and these are used by all level one and level two connectors. Uh, the next is the CHAdeMO connector, which is used by level three used for level three charging, and is typically used in Japanese electric vehicles. Uh, third is the combined charge system or the CCS, CCS plug type. Again, this is used for level three charging and is standard uh, with most American and European electric vehicles. Uh, we are seeing a shift towards more uh, CCS plug types compared to CHAdeMO. They're becoming more common. Uh, as you can see there in the image, uh, the CCS plug type builds upon the J1772 connector it has the two additional plugs on the bottom, which makes it level three charger. And finally, the fourth plug type that is used is the Tesla plug. Uh, this is for level one, two, and three. Uh, you are able to purchase a connector or an adapter that allows a Tesla plug type to charge with a, uh, a non-Tesla um, vehicle charger. However, Tesla chargers are not eligible to receive funding through the electric vehicle charging program. Uh, now we'll get into uh, the partnership with Celtro and a little bit more about the specifics of this program. So the Southgro Regional Initiative has received funding from Natural Resources Canada, uh, Interken, through the Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Program. And this funding is being delivered in partnership uh, with the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre. Uh, the MCCAC is uh, working through the EOIs and applications, and the funding is coming uh, through South Crow uh, via Enercan. Uh, the funding for this, pro for this program is available in two different phases. Uh, phase one is from uh, early May to August 9th, and during phase one, the funding for this program is only available to South Crow region applicants exclusively. So if you were to apply from the South Coast region, you would have uh, priority access to that funding. Uh, however, on August 9th, uh, that proprietary window will close and the funding will be available province-wide uh, to a later date. It is determined uh, dependent on the amount of funding that is left after the August 9th date as the program is a first come first serve basis. Uh, next, just looking at the four main project uh, program objectives of the South Grow Electric Vehicle Charging Program. Uh, the first is to develop the electric vehicle charging network throughout the South Grow region and reduce gaps between locations. Uh, this will make it easier for uh, drivers of electric vehicles and reduce range anxiety. Uh, the second is to build awareness and accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles in Alberta and support Canada's target of 100% by 
uh, zero emission vehicles by 2035. So helping build out the infrastructure so we can help meet that target. Uh, the third is to support the availability of public and private EV stations. Uh, under this program, you can apply for chargers that are used by the public, as well as chargers for private use by your own uh, business's fleet. And finally, the fourth program objective is to provide options for organizations to future-proof future their fleet operations going forward. Uh, getting into funding specifically and how that works uh, dependent on the different uh, charger types. Uh, funding for this program is sourced from Natural Resources Canada through the Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Program. And each applicant is able to receive up to $100,000 on a first come, first serve basis. And this funding is dependent on the level of charger and the power output of the charger. So going through the four different types there, uh, the first is a network level two charger, 3.3 uh, kilowatts and 19.9 kilowatts. And for this charger type, you would be able to receive up to 46% of the total costs to a maximum of $5,000 per connector. Uh, that per connector there is important. Uh, often level two chargers can come on a pedestal with two plugs on one charger itself. Uh, if you were to purchase a dual connector level two charger, you could receive up to $10,000 for that level two charger. Uh, the next is a network fast charger, uh, 20 kilowatts to 49 kilowatts. Again, you can receive up to 46% of the total costs to a maximum of $15,000 per charger. Uh, the third is a fast charger, uh, 50 kilowatts to 99 kilowatts. Again, 46% of the total costs to a maximum of $50,000 per charger. And finally, a network fast charger, uh, 100 kilowatts and above, and you can receive funding up to 46% of the total costs to a maximum of $75,000 per fast charger. Uh, I'm just going over the eligibility by organization types. Uh, some of you may be aware that there is another program being offered uh, by the Action Centre, another charging program that it's exclusive to municipalities only. Uh, the South Grow Electric Vehicle Charging Program is different as there are many more uh, organizations and business types uh, that are eligible to receive funding through this program. Uh, the first is businesses as per, as per the Business Corporations Act, uh, municipalities located throughout the province, cooperatives, Indigenous and Aboriginal communities, nonprofits, institutions, and others on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, looking at the self pro eligibility and program uh, requirements, uh, there are several project requirements and mandates that need to be met uh, from by NRCAN, uh, the MCCAC, and South Pro itself. Uh, to be eligible for this program, uh, you must install, the charger must be installed in Alberta on owned or leased land. Uh, second, the charger must be new. Uh, it can't be previous, previously used. And it must be permanently installed to be owned and operated by the applicant. Uh, as there are ongoing fees and costs associated with chargers, it's important that whoever applies to the charger is able to cover those costs going forward. Uh, third, the charger must be a network charger and approved for use in Canada. And what I mean by a network charger is a network charger has the ability to connect the internet uh, through a cellular or wireless signal to report on real-time charging station status, uh, charger usage fee, download software updates, uh, report on troubleshooting, and more. Uh, typically, network uh, fees cost anywhere from 150 to $250 per year, uh, dependent on the number of plugs on the charger. So for example, if you were to install a level two charger with two different plugs, it could cost anywhere from 300 to $500 per year. Whereas if you were to install a level three charger with only one plug type, it could cost anywhere from 150 to $250 per year. Uh, fourth requirement is that the Charger must be installed by a fully licensed electrical contractor and meet all the rules and requirements here in Alberta. Uh, fifth, it must hold, you must hold a valid 
electrical permit and pass all inspections before the charger is able to operate. And lastly, uh, if it is for public use, you must have a dedicated parking space per connector. Uh, again, as you can install either public or private uh, electric vehicle charging stations, if they are for public use, it is important that they have a dedicated parking space per connector that are only for use by electric vehicles or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles exclusively. Looking at a couple things that would make a uh, project uh, ineligible. Uh, first and foremost, uh, there cannot be any uh, retroactive costs of the program. Uh, what I mean by this is Enercan is very specific that you cannot incur any costs uh, prior to receiving funding, uh, prior, to res prior to signing a funding agreement uh, with SouthGrow. Uh, it's important that both yourself and SouthGrow has signed off on the funding agreement. You've received that, and then you are able to start uh, purchasing and installing the chargers themselves. Um, Enercan is specific that they don't want to provide any, any re retroactive uh, funding for projects. Uh, next, the chargers must be networked, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, they cannot be used to replace any existing charging infrastructure. Uh, they have to be a new charger or an addition. Uh, the chargers cannot be installed for non-passenger vehicle chargers. Uh, for example, ice resurfacers, golf carts, uh, lawnmowers, ATVs, uh, things of that nature. And finally, uh, the chargers cannot be installed for private residences. Uh, however, multi-unit residential buildings are eligible to receive funding through the program. Uh, however, there are several conditions and the chargers have to be owned and operated uh, by the owner of the multi-unit residential building. It can't be by the residents themselves. Uh, next, just looking at the eligible expenses uh, that can be covered uh, through the South Crow Electric Vehicle Charging Program. Uh, first is the costs associated with equipment and materials. So this could be covering the costs of the charger itself and any materials uh, such as cable or wire uh, that are required to install the charger. Uh, next would be the actual installation and construction of the charging station by an electrical contractor. So any work that needs to be completed uh, to either install a ground mount or a wall mount charger, uh, any concrete work, uh, any trenching for wire, any upgrades that need to be done on electrical boxes, uh, things of that nature can be covered under the program. Uh, next is engineering and design costs. Uh, sometimes for specific chargers, uh, upgrades may be needed on either the building or the landscape around where the charger may be installed. Uh, these costs can be covered under the program. Uh, however, we do ask that you include a detailed rationale and scope of work of why these engineering and design and design work needs to be completed. Uh, fourth is permitting and inspection costs. Uh, there can be permitting costs that go along with installing the charger, such as a building permit or an electrical permit. Uh, these costs are eligible to be covered. Uh, fifth is any signage, uh, parking space, paint, or physical barriers. Again, as the chargers need to have a dedicated parking stall, a stall if they're used by the public. Uh, it's important that they're clearly marked and dedicated just for electric vehicles and costs associated with doing so can be covered under this program. And finally is electrical service upgrades on a case by case basis uh, as level three chargers often require phase three power uh, infrastructure upgrades are sometimes needed uh, dependent on the applicant. If it's a smaller business who may not have phase three power, an upgrade may be required to, to meet that higher demand of the level three charger and dependent on the wire service provider and the current infrastructure. Uh, some of those costs can be covered under the South Crow electric vehicle charging program. Uh, there are several ineligible expenses that cannot be covered uh, through the program. Uh, the first is any GST uh, taxes, land or legal costs. Uh, second is the ongoing operation and maintenance costs of the charger. Uh, there are several ongoing costs associated with them, uh, such as uh, any maintenance costs, uh, the cost of electricity itself, uh, power demand, as well as the networking costs associated. Uh, 
and those cannot be covered uh, by this program. Uh, third is any extended warranties. Uh, they will not be covered. And fourth is any in-house labor and administrative costs relating to participating in this program. Uh, any expenses incurred by the participant to either uh, submit documents to the program or any other administrative costs relating to participating in the charging program as well. Looking at some things to consider, uh, if you are looking to install an electric vehicle uh, charging station uh, on your business or at your location, uh, it's important to consider uh, the availability of phase three power and the current electrical infrastructure. As level three chargers do require phase three power, uh, it's important to consider if that's available and how much it would cost to upgrade it to level three. Uh, for example, a small business may not have level three power, while a larger facility, uh, for example, a hockey rink, uh, may have phase three power and installing a level three charger would be significantly easier, easier and cheaper. Uh, it's also important to consider this for level two chargers. Uh, if any upgrades are needed, for example, in the breaker box, uh, any cable upgrades or wire upgrades as well. Uh, next, it's important to consider any nearby amenities as well as the visibility of the charging station itself. Uh, for the level two chargers, uh, because people will be parking and charging their vehicle, ideally for over an hour or two, it's important to consider what's nearby. Uh, there's any shops, uh, restrooms, uh, restaurants, uh, shopping, uh, movie theaters, parks, uh, things of that nature, uh, things for people to do while their vehicle is charging. Uh, for level three chargers, it's not as important as people are only parking for maybe half an hour to charge. However, it's still important to consider uh, what's in the area and what's in the close vicinity, as well as it's important to consider uh, how easy it is to find the charger itself, uh, its visibility, uh, adequate lighting and if people feel safe using that charger. Uh, third, it's also important to consider any charging usage fees uh, for public stations. Uh, for the charging program, it is up to the applicant to decide if they want to charge a usage fee for use of their charger. Um, typically for level two chargers, uh, we recommend uh, that there is a roughly around a dollar fifty to two. 50 an hour uh, usage fee for the level two charger to prevent people from uh, sitting and using the charger uh, for an extended period of time. And for the level three chargers, uh, roughly around a 35 cents per hour, or thir sorry, 35 cents uh, per minute charging fee for the level three. Uh, additionally, it's important to consider uh, the ongoing costs that are associated with the charging stations. Again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the cost of electricity itself, um, the uh, maintenance fees, and as well as network fees that are associated with the charger. And finally, it's important uh, to consider is uh, the location you're looking at installing the chargeable, is it suitable when uh, looking at the outdoor uh, outdoor temperatures and outdoor operations. Uh, is it directly located in the sun, uh, which can have a detrimental effect on the charger and the charger performance? Uh, is it located in a very windy location, which could also have a negative effect? And is it in a location that people are able to find and see easily with adequate lighting? Uh, next, just looking at participation timeline. Uh, if you were interested in um, uh, pursuing funding through the electric vehicle charging program, uh, first we recommend uh, reviewing uh, the guidebooks and resources that are found on the Action Center website. Uh, these guidebooks and resources uh, just break down everything I've kind of gone through today, uh, give a little bit more insight into the specific requirements, eligibility, and how the funding works uh, for this program. Once you've read those, uh, you are welcome to submit an expression of interest uh, through the Action Center's website. Uh, an expression of interest isn't binding, isn't contractual, anything like that. Uh, it's just kind of a form that outlines um, what you're looking uh, for installing at your location, uh, where your location's at, and kind of what you have in mind for your specific project. 
after we've received an expression of interest, uh, we'd be happy to have a meeting, kind of go over in a little more detail uh, of what you're exactly looking for for your project and how the funding will work. Uh, after that, you are welcome to submit an application through the Action Center's website. Uh, the application process is fairly straightforward. Uh, just a little bit of inf a little bit of information about uh, your specific location, uh, what the charger will be used for, uh, if it's going to be public or private use, if there's going to be a uh, pay per usage fee. And then there's two tables that just break down some more specifics of the chargers themselves. So the first table just asks for some information about the specific charger, its brand, uh, power output, uh, voltage, uh, pay for use, uh, stuff like that. And the final table uh, just asks for the associated costs to be broken down. So how much the charger itself is to purchase? Uh, what are the install costs? Are there any permitting costs? Any design or engineering costs? Any electrical upgrade costs? And what the um, signage costs are as well? And with that application, uh, you are also required to submit uh, a spec sheet of the charger or chargers you're looking to install, as well as a quote from uh, electric vehicle charging supplier or a contractor who will be doing the install of the charger itself. Uh, once we've received that application, uh, we'll go through it, make sure everything's up to date, accurate, and good to go, and we will. Uh, issue a funding agreement. Uh, we'll sign off on the amount of funding you're eligible to receive. Uh, you can read, th read through that, sign off, and then that funding agreement will be sent to South Grow, uh, where, they, where they will agree on it. And after that funding agreement is signed by both parties, uh, you are then eligible and able to start your project. So you can start incurring costs. Um, after the funding agreement has been signed, uh, you have 12 months to complete the install. Uh, with limited extensions of extensions available uh, as funding does come through intercam they are quite specific um, on that 12 month deadline and and completing it in time uh, once the install has been completed uh, there are several completion and verification documents uh, that need to be sent in to, to just make sure everything is complete uh, that includes uh, proof of payment uh, invoice uh, some high quality pictures and they post on social media or something of that nature. Uh, once of those, once those documents have been received, uh, they will be uh, looked at at the action center here, uh, gone through, make sure everything is up to date and accurate. And a funding uh, funding will be um, the completion statement will be issued to Southgrow, and they will request funding uh, from Natural Resources Canada. Uh, as Natural Resources Canada only issues funding uh, quarterly. Uh, funding can take up to up to 150 days to receive that funding uh, for your specific project. And that covers the specifics of the electric vehicle charging program. Uh, now I'll just go through uh, some of the tools and resources uh, that are useful uh, when looking to purchase electric vehicles and looking to looking to design uh, electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, first, uh, there is an EV savings calculator uh, available on the Action Center's website. Uh, this is a good starting point to just get an idea of the associated costs and greenhouse gas emissions associated with electric vehicles and how they compare to conventional internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, uh, just some inputs such as uh, annual distance driven, uh, the price of fuel, price of electricity, uh, lifetime of the vehicle, if you've received any rebates, and then you are able to choose from a drop down menu from a number of available uh, electric vehicles and plug in hybrid electric vehicles, and you're able to compare them to uh, a list of internal combustion engine vehicles as well. Uh, once you have all that information inputted, uh, you can click uh, to see the associated savings, and it, dis and it displays all the information here in a spreadsheet. Uh, you're able to see uh, the annual fuel cost comparison of the electric vehicle compared to the combustion engine vehicle, uh, the associated and estimated uh, maintenance costs, and as well as the annual uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions that are associated uh, with 
with those two vehicles as well. Uh, next, we recommend also reading through the electric vehicle knowledge guide. Uh, again, this is available on the Action Center's website. Uh, again, it breaks down uh, the specifics of electric vehicles, uh, different types, uh, their functions and their availability. And also we recommend reading through uh, the electric vehicle install and operations guide. Uh, this guide is a little bit more specific and does provide um, a list of possible uh, charging station providers and contractors who can install electric vehicle charging stations, as well as some of the best practices uh, when installing and operating uh, electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging stations. And that wraps up our webinar on the self throw electric vehicle charging station. Uh, thank you for everyone who attended, as well as the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce uh, for hosting this event, and Peter Casarella from the self throw Regional Initiative for helping putting this together. Uh, we will now open up, uh, I guess, the floor for questions. Uh, if you do have any, uh, feel free to type them in the Q&A box, and we'll get to as many as we can. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Logan. Uh, we only have one question so far. Uh, it comes from Mark saying, can you please send this presentation in PDF? Also, uh, do we need to wait until August 9th for the expression of interest, or can we do that sooner? So I'm assuming that Mark um, is thinking about a project outside of the South Grove region. OK, yeah, for the first part, yes, we can. Uh, we can get that presentation to you for sure. Um, second, um, for uh, EOI expression, uh, you're welcome to submit one before the August 9th, um, the August 9th date where it opens up province wide. Uh, you're welcome to submit a full application before that. All right, well, we'll give it a minute or two for any additional questions to come in. Um, as a reminder, you can certainly uh, send any other questions that you think of later on uh, to contact at mccac.ca and, and we can also get uh, back to you that way. All right, we've had one more come in uh, asking, could you double back and speak to what is asked for in the application and to the funding availability by charger? For sure, I can hear. Uh, so for the application process specifically, um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, there is just a little bit of information uh, that is required uh, about your location, uh, what type of charge you're looking to install, and if it's going to be a pay for use or a public charger, as well as uh, two tables that break down uh, the charger specifically. So what, uh, what specific brand it is, uh, its power output, uh, voltage, uh, things of that nature. And then another table uh, that uh, outlines the associated costs. So the cost of the charger itself, uh, the cost of the install, and the, any permitting costs, engineering costs, or signage costs, as well uh, a spec sheet of the charger or chargers that you're looking to install, and a quote from an electrical contractor or a supplier of the charger. Uh, for the second part, for the funding available, uh, it is dependent on the level of charger that you're looking to install. So for a level two network charger, you can receive up to 46% of the associated costs, uh, up to $5,000 per connector. And if it's a dual uh, charge, a dual connector pedestal, uh, you can receive uh, $10,000. So for this specifically, if your project was to cost exactly, let's say $10,000, uh, 
uh, you could receive a rebate uh, for $4,600. And if, for example, if this project cost uh, $14,000, uh, you could receive uh, $5,000 per connector. I hope that hope that helps your answers the question. Yeah, and then it looks like there's there might be one follow up uh, to that same question, just asking for some details regarding what makes for a, a successful application. Um, and, and maybe I can even just take that one. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, like Logan mentioned, uh, the program is first come first serve. So as long as absolutely everything in the application uh, form is provided and you provide an adequate amount of detail, um, always better to just uh, err on the side of caution and, and provide um, a little bit of extra detail. Um, because it is first come first serve, we, we're not uh, looking at these in a kind of competitive, um, we're not taking a competitive approach. Um, so as long as you understand the requirements very well, uh, I'd recommend again reading through the, the guidebook um, and even the install and operations guide uh, and everything in the application form is filled out. Um, your chances will be quite good. Uh, questions are starting to come in here now. Um, so we have another question, is wall mounted considered permanent? Uh, yes, wall mounted is considered permanent. Um, we also, uh, uh, throughout the verification process, will be requesting photos. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we will be able to look at that on a case-by-case -case basis um, and, and would certainly ask questions if the, uh, in the install uh, does not look like it's uh, intended for permanent. Um, uh, it's not an intended for a permanent kind of use. Um, so good to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, next question is, how long does it take for MCCAC to process, uh, fully process a completed application? Uh, it doesn't take too long to fully process an application, uh, especially if all the required information and everything we need there is present. Uh, we can get that turned around uh, in a few days, uh, outline the funding agreement, and then send it your way. That will outline the specifics of the funding that you could receive uh, through the program. So. Not uh, not too long at all, a couple of days. Awesome, appreciate the questions. Uh, the next question states, uh, if I am headquartered in Edmonton, but I have an office in Lethbridge, can I apply under the South Grow timelines for an install at my Lethbridge office, or do I have to wait until August 9th? Um. That's a good question. If your location is in Lethbridge, uh, you would be eligible to receive uh, funding before that August 9th uh, deadline because because Lethbridge is located within the South Grow region. Yes. All right. The next question from Mark again asks, how is funding released through the project only upon completion? As in, is it only a rebate? Yeah, that's a good question. So it is just a rebate. Uh, so the entire upfront cost uh, is covered, will have to be covered uh, by the applicant. And then once that install has been completed and all the project verification steps um, have been reviewed uh, by the MCCAC, uh, that funding will be requested from NRCAN and then be issued to you uh, within 150 days. So yes, the entire cost has to be covered up front and then you will receive your rebate uh, after the install. All right, the next question asks, can we turn a profit by operating a charging station for the public? Um, I'm on I don't honestly know. I guess you could. Yeah, you could uh, potentially um, dependent on how how often these chargers are used and the amount uh, you are charging uh, at what is your paper use it should be. So yeah, if it has high demand and a higher paper use, uh, you could turn a profit. Yeah, and just to expand on that, um, there's nothing in the program that states uh, you know, applicants can or cannot uh, uh, end up earning a profit. Um, so yeah, like Logan said, it's um, it, it will kind of depend on 
the usage, um, also your cost of electricity at that, uh, or your, your contract, um, and, and a handful of other factors. All right, Jeff is asking, what generally are the costs of each level of charger? Uh, so that's a good question, and uh, I wish I could give you a more concrete answer, but it is really dependent on uh, your location and the specific charge you're looking to install. Uh, it does vary quite a bit. Um, what we do see is for level two chargers, um, for the purchase and a complete install, uh, maybe within the range of fifteen to twenty thousand uh, dollars. However, that is highly dependent on the charger you're purchasing and your location as well. And then for a level three charger, again, there's even more variability um, because they do require phase three power uh, for the purchase and the install. Uh, it can range anywhere from 80 to $110,000 uh, depending on your location. So uh, quite a range is really dependent on the charger uh, you are looking at purchasing. Perfect. Well, that looks like it's all of the questions. All right, I guess we can wrap up there then. Uh, thank you everybody for participating in today's webinar. Uh, it will be available on the Action Center's website uh, as well as the South Grow website uh, in the next couple of days. And if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out at, uh, to MCCAC uh, at contact.ca uh, if you do have any questions or would like to learn any more about the about the program. Uh, thank you.